Welcome back to story time. Let's go ahead and jump right into the video. Where we had last left off, the team decided we need a bigger ship. So we made a pit stop at the nearest person selling ships, which just so happened to be Larry's ludicrous ships. We were introduced to his daughters and then Larry himself. After perusing his wares, we had decided on a ship. After haggling for a bit, we managed to convince him to drop the price a little bit if the guy will shoot a commercial for him. The commercial done, we left with our brand new ship and that's where we'll pick up. I also forgot to mention that we bought insurance on this ship this time, since, you know, the last one we had kind of flew into a planet. Either way, the other two were working on getting the ship set up while the kid was attempting to fix his computer that had sandwich all smashed into it. And I failed the roll. Luckily, I didn't crit fail, so I actually managed to salvage some of the computer. A good portion of it was completely ruined thanks to having a sandwich stuffed inside of it. Another piece of equipment lost. The kid understandably upset over his 20,000 cred computer being broken kind of just left the scraps of the sandwich and the broken bits of the computer in the captain's quarters. He wasn't living there anyway, so it was no longer his mess. He made his way back to the other living quarters that was set up like barracks and kind of just put the what was left of the computer and the rest of his stuff and just picked a bunk. Eventually he makes his way up with the rest of the team to help them set up the ship. He starts hacking into the security systems on the ship without telling Joanna. Rolls decently high, however, so did the ship. And since the ship was in Joanna's name, she was the only person that was cleared to be accessing the security systems on the ship and was notified promptly. She understandably starts freaking out considering we just bought an entire cult and all of a sudden we buy a new spaceship and it instantly starts being hacked. And then she finds out it's just a kid and kind of just like, yo, what are you doing? I'm just checking out the security systems to make sure everything's on the up and up. Well, tell me next time before you just help yourself to the security systems. Don't fuck anything up. This is still technically my ship. Uh-huh, sure. Um, well, I'm gonna get back to what I was doing. Completely disregarding what Joanna said, he put himself in charge of everything on the ship including the turrets that were outside, locking down the ship, uh, remotely starting it, the whole nine yards. He cleared the rest of them too, however he has priority. With most of the ship set up done, they just started to make themselves at home. Since we didn't exactly have a whole bunch to do, Firewall had told us to lay low after our incident with the Colt and Camille. They also informed us that the remaining members of the Colt had put a bounty on our heads. So a further incentive not to draw attention to ourselves. So with no jobs lined up, we finally had a little bit of downtime. First thing that the kid did was grab a computer and a couple of monitors from the computer room on the ship and put them in the barracks where he was staying at. With his computer setup done, he set to work on a list of things he wanted to buy experiment with and design. First on the list was an experiment. She wanted to hack his muse and kind of remove the limiters on her so that she can have more free will to do what she wants. I think the easiest way to explain a muse would be think of Jarvis from like Iron Man and that's kind of what a muse is. Possibly a little bit more high tech though. So he gets to work on that, rolls stupid high and removes the limiters without alerting any authorities or anything because this is a super omega illegal. With his experiments out of the way, the kid and the guy wanted some more modifications for their morph, so they set up a time for surgery. The guy's surgery was set for tomorrow since he called before the kid, and the kid's was set for the day after. Also, both bought a bunch of shit that was just gonna get delivered to the ship. And since Joanna was going to be here, somebody was here to pick it up. Speaking of her, I have no idea what she did during this time. I actually completely forgot. And with the date sets for the surgeries, uh, we kind of just went forward with that. Joanna went and got him and brought him back with no problems. He was just sore and just had to take it easy for a couple of days. As the kid went to go get his surgery done. At some point during his surgery, he woke up. There was no surgeons in the room or anything. He was still strapped to the table. All the instruments for the surgery were still there. However, there was a man sitting across the room in a chair who looked all too familiar as he noticed the kid had woken up. It was Dick Chambers. You are one hard little man to find. Don't worry, I'm not going to do anything to you now. En enjoy your surgery. I'll be in touch. He said as he slowly got up and made his way out of the room, as the surgeons and nurses made their way back in and put the kid back under. 
next episode will be out on Monday. I've been super busy this past week and I also like to write in my spare time as well. So going forward, the story time episode schedule will be Mondays and Fridays. You guys can follow me on Twitter at Jar of Wizard and on Tumblr at the exact same handle. If you guys enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like, maybe comments, maybe even subscribe, maybe even share it with your street pharmacist. I don't know. You beautiful people have a nice day. Bye.